Welcome to another free tip video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a search form. We're going to make a customer search form with a text box and a list box. I'm going to show you how to search customer records. In today's tip, I'm going to show you how to make a search form. So you can search for a customer by typing in, for example, a few letters of their name and then it'll update your customer list to show just those customers with that in their name. So here I've got a real basic access database that I use as kind of a template so I don't have to keep recreating stuff like this. It's got a real simple customer table, customer T, right, ID, first name, last name, and so on. It's got a very simple customer form, right, and this is kind of my template for lessons so I don't have to keep rebuilding these from scratch. If you want to learn how to build something like this, then watch my beginner access level one class that is on YouTube and on my website for free and it'll teach you how to build these things. Ignore the label stuff, that's just from a, a previous lesson where I showed people how to make mailing labels. But anyways, what I want to be able to do is, here's my customer list, my customer table. All right. Now, yeah, there's only three customers in here right now, let's pretend there was 3,000. And I want to be able to have a form where I can quickly type in, let's say, RO and find all of the customers the last name RO. Now, yes, you, the Access Developer, can simply come in here and use the search tools and do the things that we Access Developers know and love, and it's easy for us. However, your end user, the person that you're building this database for, might not have those skills, and you might not want them digging around inside your tables or have to teach them how to come in here and do a search based on a field. We want to make it nice and easy and simple for them. All right. So what I'm going to do is, first, I'm going to create a blank form. All right, here's my blank form, form one. And I'm going to put a text box across the top and then a list of customers below it. All right, so let's come up here. I'm going to grab a text box and drop that right here. And I'll put in here search. That's just my label, right? And this thing here we'll call the search box. So open up its properties. There's the properties. I don't want text zero. I want, let's call this the search box. Okay? And then below that, we're going to put a list box with my list of customers. Now, before I can make my list box, I need to make a query that's going to limit the values in the list box. It's going to filter them with a condition, a criteria, that says only show me the customers where the last name, let's say, you can pick any field that you want, or in one of my more advanced lessons, I show you how to do multiple fields. But for today, we're just going to focus on one field, last name where the last name has these letters in it. All right, so we need to make a query first before we can make a list box. Let's save this form. This will be my search F, my search form. I like to end all my forms in F. All right, so let's create a query next. Create, query design. I just want my customer table in it. Close that. All right, I'm going to bring in the customer ID. Always good to have the ID. That way that's in the list box too, and I can do other things with the list box, like double click on the customer to open up the customer form, but that's, that's later. All right, bring in first name and last name. Now, for last name, I need to put in here some criteria. All right, now if I wanted just exactly what's in the last name box, I could say equals forms search F. You see the little helper box pop up there, and then search box, which is right there search box. If I want it to be exact, all right, but I don't want it to be exact, I want to be able to use wildcards. So instead of equals, I'm going to say like, quote, asterisk, quote, ampersand, that says put a star in front of it, and then whatever the, that criteria is, and then put a star at the end of it. All right, I teach this in my classes too. If you don't know how to use a like keyword, that's a basic query design. That's covered in my Access Beginner Level 5 class. All right, but that basically says like star, which means any number of characters, and let's say there's just an R in there, right? Like star, R star, which means that as long as there's an R anywhere in the field. Okay, now I can save this. I'll call this my search queue for query, my search queue. Okay, now this won't work uh, if this form isn't open. So this form has to be open for this query to work because it's got to have somewhere to get its criteria from. All right, so let's close that. Now we have a query that we can build our search form on. Okay, so again, let's create. And now we want to go to design and find a list box. There's a list box tool. Drop that there. Now I want the list box to get the values from the table of query. That's fine. Go to queries. There's my search queue. 
All right, what fields do you want? Well, let's bring them all over. Next. How do you want to sort them? I'm going to sort last name and then first name. Next. Now, you're going to get pound name errors in here because Access, the wizard, cannot run the query because this form technically isn't open. There's no data there. So the pound name error is, is accepted. Just ignore that. We're going to hide the customer ID field by going like this. Watch. Boop. Get rid of it. Just like that. Hide the key field. All right. And the reason why Access... Well, the reason why the wizard didn't uh, offer that option for us like it does with tables is because we're basing this off of a query. That's a little quirk. All right, next. What field do you want to base this list box off of in case you want to do more stuff with it or refer to this value later? Customer ID is fine. And again, I cover all of this in my beginner classes. And then finish. All right, so there's my list box. I'm just going to delete that label. All right, so now I've got my search box. Now, save that. I'm going to put a splash of color on this form because that white background is is irritating me. All right, there we go. So there's our search form. I'm going to save it, I'm going to close it, and I'm going to open it back up again. Now you can see I'm getting all of the records in there. And if I put something in here like RO, nothing happens. All right, because we have to have some way to trigger this list box to requery itself. All right, when I change this. Now we could make a button. All right, a button will work. Or I could make an event to do it. All right, I'm going to use an event called the after update event. So that whenever this is changed, then this will update itself. All right, first, let's open up the properties for this list box that we just created, though. The name of this list box is list4. I don't like that. I don't like the default names that get generated when you create objects. So we're going to call this my search list. All right, that's the search box. That's the search list. It's a list box. All right, now let's go to the search box, go to events. We're going to set the after update event for this guy. So after update, hit the dot, dot, dot button. Pick code builder. We could write a macro for it. It's literally just one line of code, though. So we're going to use a code builder. Now, I've got all kinds of classes teaching you how all of this work. All right. But for now, we're just going to come in here. Right inside this private sub search box, we're going to type in search list dot requery. And that's it. It's one line of code. See, once you learn VBA, you can do some pretty cool stuff with just one or two lines of code. So save that, control S. I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to shut down the properties. I'm going to close this box. Reopen up the search form. I'm going to type in RO and then press tab. And look at that. My box now limited, it requeried, and it limited itself to just the customers with last names RO. ROS. Okay. SM. There's Smith, right? You could put this in a button too and make the make the code run in the button if that's easier. If you think your your people will understand that better, okay? R O, right? They just type it in and press tab or enter. Now I do have a class, uh, Microsoft Access Developer Level Eight, where I take this concept a lot further. Where I I make it first of all where we've got first name, last name, and company name. And you can search based on any of those three fields. I'll show you how to do that in the class. So if I type in R, I, all right, notice also it runs in a different kind of event. It searches as you type, all right? So if I just go R, it gives me the R's. If I go R, I, without pressing tab or enter immediately, it refreshes the box as I'm typing. And now you can see the R, I is in first name here, and it's here at the end of this company name. So you can search in any number of fields if you want to. It's a little more complicated. But it's not that hard to do. And I show you how in my class, Access Developer 8. I'll put the links to all of this in the description below the video. But this involves a couple of different events, uh, a couple of functions like key press, and a lot of stuff that I show in that class. And I also teach you in Developer 9 how you can then double click or click on one of these customers and then have it open up the customer form. And there's the customer form. I hope you've enjoyed today's tip. Once again, I cover this uh, in a lot more detail in my Microsoft Access Developer Level 8 class. I'll put a link in the description below the video. My name, once again, is Richard Ross, and I hope you'll come and see me at my website, accesslearningzone.com. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and a comment. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and visit my channel page. Also, you can come to my website at accesslearningzone.com, and you can watch Level 1, my entire three-hour beginner Level 1 access class for free. It's also here on YouTube. And you can get Level 2 for just $1 if you want to keep learning.